I love, love, love when my interests collide. And it's interesting the guests that I end up attracting for the Real Biz Talk podcast. My name is Rachel Branke and welcome today, my worlds of my fashion interests, such as Tori Birch and military spouse background in entrepreneurship have all collided into my guests. Who's going to bring you some kind of no nonsense marketing, business and life advice, much like I do. So if you are ready for the no nonsense approach to business and life, This is the episode for you. Welcome, Kia. I am so excited to have you back on the podcast. You're one of my favorite people that I've connected with online because our missions align so much. Um, I love your bio where you call yourself like a no-nonsense advocate. I feel like that's where we're very similar in like the get right to the point. Uh, I want to start with kind of how you got into entrepreneurship because you didn't, you weren't birthed into an empire that you created. You built it yourself. And so I'll let you kind of explain a bit about that. Yeah. Well, first, thank you for having me. It's always great to sit and talk to my friend, Rachel. Entrepreneurship, it's funny because it was, um, it was kind of like a seed that was planted into me. I have always had, um, always been really creative um, and did a lot of freelance work. I was um, married to someone that was in the army, you know, military lifestyle. We're constantly moving around and and doing things. And um, after a while, corporate wasn't really working for our family. Um, Mm -hmm. So I stopped working and did a lot of freelancing. And that turned into, okay, um, someone planted a seed that I was working with that you should really just get into social media management. I was like, is that a thing you can do? This was like back in 2017. She was like, yes, there's so many people who need support. And so I just did a little research and was like, oh, this is something Mm -hmm. you can do. And so I did it. I had had, um, been managing a few of their profiles um, uh, kind of as an independent contractor, but Mm -hmm. even still it hadn't dawned on me that I could make it a business. And so when I did my research, I set up a little website and announced my business and got a client on that same day and have been rolling ever since from 2017. So 2017. So just like in the timeline of the world right now, that was three years before this big, big push into online sphere because of pandemic where everyone was kind of thrusted into it. So you were still kind of in the cusp where it was in the upswing of people doing stuff online, but it wasn't like now it's. I just remember prior to that, at least for me, maybe the same for you, I would have a conversation about working online and people were kind of like, ooh, does she like work in a call center? Like, what does she do online? Like, there really wasn't this, or a YouTube influencer, or like, you know, there wasn't really this connection, whereas now people are like, okay, I get it. So do you think that your timing of that um, helped to leverage into what you're doing, which we'll talk about here in a second, like, or do you think that you still would have probably ended up where you're at now, even without coming in at that time? Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely think timing um, is was very helpful for me um, mm-hmm. talking about like nobody really knowing what you're doing. Like to this day, my dad really doesn't understand how I make money. He's like, oh, she gets on she gets on the Internet and people pay her. Like, it's really- <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully they're not making OnlyFans or something, but right, that's, no. your gig, that's your deal. Right. But that's a little <laughs> different than social media management. <laughs> he knows that it's legit, but he is still very confused by it. Um, but, you know. Since the pandemic and even actually, I mean, I don't know about you, but during the pandemic, my business actually flourished. Yes. um, And but it's been like the past year or so that I'm seeing like, oh, like things are changing. Times are changing. So like business is changing, but also the way that we market is changing the way that people Mm -hmm. um, buy and are influenced and um, want to connect, especially Mm -hmm. when it comes to services. All of that is changing. So even though I started out at this time where there was this upswing of online business, like we're still having to pivot. Like everyone I know was like, you know, things are changing and we're going to have to change the way that we do things. So even though it was helpful that I started and have been in business for five years, like we're still learning, we're still growing. And the thing that I have learned is that you're never fully done. You're never fully there because the markets change. Right. People um, psychology, the way that people behave, behaviors change um, as kind of a, as a holistic group that you still have to kind of mm-hmm. stay ahead of that and be cognizant of that. So you can't stay stuck in what worked for you in 2017. Um, mm-hmm. So, so yeah, it's kind of like both, like it was great that I started then, but also 
that knowledge is not what's going to sustain you in today's in today's online business. Kind of. Which can be discouraging, I think, sometimes, especially if someone's watching or listening to this and they're like, girl, I'm just trying to get my feet under me. I can't even think about the fact that I may have to pivot again in the future. Like you just mm-hmm. want to get going. And so that can be discouraging. But I know for me, I often sit and think about when I first started out, how much I enjoyed the challenge of trying to get my legs under me. Yeah, it was difficult. I mean, there was, uh, we needed money, husband was deployed, all these sort of things going on. So do I really want that stress back? No, but the lessons I learned. And so it is kind of exciting sometimes if you take the mindset of, okay, I can get my legs under me and just be prepared to have to pivot um, or change, not even a full pivot, right? Just changing with the way that things went. I know, and we don't have to go too deep into this, but you know, pandemic was huge for everyone, but I know that you and I both have personal stuff that having a flexible online based business that was already in existence kind of did help to carry some of that other part of burden in life, you know, like financial, what are you going to do? How are you going to support And so I throw that piece out of don't be discouraged hearing from us of like, oh, I may have missed the boat. You know, we're already in this flourishing online or, oh, my gosh, we're going to have to change as we grow. I think any time that you can get it into place because you never really know what will come down the pipeline. Yeah. And if I mean, really, someone who's uh, has the courage to start their own business has a bit of ambition. Right. And so that ambition doesn't doesn't necessarily change. Um, just because like things happen in your business. So if you can tap into, um, mm-hmm. I know it sounds cliche, but like why you started your business and what benefits you get um, from having that business and just kind of lean into your expertise and really understand what you're doing. So you're mm-hmm. not out here just uh, hopping on every single trend to get by, but you really understand yes. what um, you know, you're an expert thought leader in what you're doing, you will be fine. And embracing the fact that like, mm-hmm. again, if you're an ambitious person, you're always looking to grow and evolve. And it's the same thing with business. You're always going to be growing and evolving. Mm-hmm. So asking yourself, what is this moment trying to teach me? And then going for it, that same ambition that mm-hmm. encouraged you to, and inspired you to start your business will be what keeps you going, even when things change. You know, I have a tendency and maybe it's because I'm getting older now and the way the world has changed for me. But I, in the very beginning, was very much give me a formula. Let me do it. I'm going to stick to this plan. And I didn't in the moments where I got overwhelmed and stressed or having to make these changes because of the market. It wasn't. Well, let me remember what my why was. Let me reorient myself. It was very much bulldozer. I'm going to stick it with what I'm doing. And I think you just had a couple of key things that some people may consider buzzwords like what's your why? You know, why you started this, you know, having the ambition. These are things that we see on Instagram and Pinterest. and We go, how cute. And then we scroll on by. But they really are so incredibly pivotal. And you're not the only entrepreneur that I've talked to recently that we are in this stage where we were prior pandemic, you know, in the upswing now still that we're getting almost back to those basics that you probably had in lesson one in a business course that you took how many years ago? Exactly. Yes. That's what I've been noticing, especially when it comes um, to marketing as a whole. It's like back in 2017, everything was blog posts and everybody's a blogger and influencer and like people want to read things. And then it went to social media. Everything has to be like focused on social. And now it's swinging back to content. Now it's swinging back to (laughs) blogs and podcasts and videos. Right. And so um, and it's less about, you know, posting to your Instagram. So I have noticed that those things uh, that it's almost like circling back, kind of like when bell bottoms and uh, (laughs) and all of those things. Same thing with marketing, same thing with online business. And and that's helpful in knowing like, oh, those things that you learned back then, Mm -hmm. like can still contribute um, to your business now. I love you said about the bell bottoms because while I was doing my hair for this, I did the side part and I'm wearing like a skinny jeans. And I was like, I just need it to swing back and I'll be back in trend. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So funny. Well, I want to ask you, I mean, you've done so phenomenally well in a quote unquote short period of time. And in fact, I thought it was longer than five years because you've done so incredibly well and much deserved. I want to talk about working with the Tory Burch uh, Foundation, mm-hmm. what that is and how you, I mean, that's incredible. I was so super proud every single time I get an email from them and I see your face. I'm like, yeah, I know that girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was so the Tory Burch Foundation. Um, I absolutely adore. They have a, a, a 
huge place in my heart. When the pandemic started, one of the things that they pivoted to was the small business webinar. So a lot of people know like the fellows program that the Tory Burch Foundation has, but they were like, you know what? We really want to um, be able to help small businesses right now, especially since people can't get out of the house. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's also my work with them is a testament to um, community and support. So I had a really great friend. Um, she is in the branding space. She now does branding um, for beauty, um, for, for uh, beauty brands, but at the time, she'd worked with the Tory Burch Foundation, and they were like, who who else do you know that's like, just really has it together, that's like, really, really has a really great way of looking at things? And she mentioned my name. And, um, you know, I always say that it's really powerful when you, when people speak your name in rooms that you aren't in, um, because it has become a relationship since mm-hmm. 2020, where they continue to come back to me. Kia, mm-hmm. people want to hear this. Oh, we thought we thought of you when we got these questions. Can you come back? And, um, you know, I when I set out in 2017, I never would have thought that I'd be working so closely with the Tory Burch Foundation um, mm-hmm. or that, like, I thought at first it'd be one and done. Like, I did this really incredible thing. Um, but it's one thing for a person to mention your name, but then you have to show up and do the work. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that's, that's the important thing. Like if I just showed up and wasn't impressive, probably would have never um, come back to me. So, mm-hmm. um, so, you know, it's okay to, to, uh, you know, have a support system to have um, peers um, to speak their names in rooms. And then you have to show up and do the work and, and, um, and, have impact. And so um, they have impacted my business, obviously, but I obviously have impacted um, Mm -hmm. the foundation and their mission as well. And so it's a beautiful, mutually beneficial relationship that I can't, Mm -hmm. um, I can't be more thankful for. And I believe that the fellows applications are still open. So it's open right now. Mm -hmm. Go check out Tory Burch Foundation and, and apply for that fellowship. I love that you bring up the community aspect because that's kind of always the vibe. That's how we connected anyway. So military spouse community. I don't even think we knew of each other really like online, seeing each other's ads or posts or anything. It was really hearing the names in rooms. And then we've worked in different capacities together. Um, I think community was one thing that as a busy mom, I know that you definitely identify with this as well. Um, I kind of let fall to the wayside in my entrepreneurship journey because when I start looking at the list of things I need to do in a day, it was like, well, hanging out and networking really has fallen off the list because I have to put on a bra, get dressed, go meet someone or find some. Well, now Zoom is more uh, Mm -hmm. popular to really connect and talk with others. But it was very much I just got to get through all these other like methodical things I need to do. A community fell off. But you push community a lot with um, not just the messaging, the way that you help uh, women in their getting their businesses out there, but you surround it with this pivotal aspect of community. Um, have you always had that community heart center? I kind of feel like that's the vibes I get. I mean, that's, yeah. that's kind of the heart that you have. And I would love community. but I struggle with the very logical, got to go through my to-do list type of thing. Yeah. So at, at this point, it has been a struggle to stay on top of community, even for myself, where I have had to get back to, okay, you're isolating Kia. Like, um, and so yeah. one way uh, that I have, community is a group chat. So I have a group chat of like six friends where we, it, it's just on Facebook. Like it's not even on text message. Like, <laughs> and we give each other a lot of grace. So we talk about business. We talk about life. We talk about funny things. We're sharing TikTok videos, like all these things. It's just fun. So it's not always business. It's not always heavy. Um, but then we give each other grace too. If we notice that Jessica hasn't been in there for a couple of days, we're checking on her. Are you okay? She lets us know if we are or not. Um, mm-hmm. And then you jump back in whenever you can. So mm-hmm. we, it's it, you have to build community around like-minded people, right? So if you if it's important to everyone in your community that you have to meet at a certain time and you have mm-hmm. to be strict and rigid and you can't do that, then that's not the right community for you. Um, so finding those mm-hmm. like-minded individuals and making it more than just um, business because you don't want it to feel like it's getting in your way. 
right? You want yeah. it to feel like something you want to show up in. Yeah. And my group chat, we call each other. We, we've said it's trademarked. Uh, the group chat is trademarked. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like that is what it is for me. So it's more than just business. It is, these are mm-hmm. my friends. This is who I do life with. They also mm-hmm. happen to be entrepreneurs, have online businesses. So they get me. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that's really critically important too. That's one of the things that I, when I've sat down, especially recently, I got into a local organization, other people that aren't even in really in the same field as me, like it's really kind of foreign, the Mm -hmm. online space to them and what I'm doing, but it's finding a community. And what I'm seeing, you just hit it on the head. You don't just talk business. And it's, it's really easy, at least for me, when I'm sitting down looking at the budget for the year. I mean, this is like a paid organization or if I'm going to get into like a coaching or something and to say, okay, how can this benefit my business and stay in that column when really the most um, pivotal revelations that I've had and are just been one-off comments or questions that aren't even related to business. It's about me personally and my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That makes complete sense. Like that's, yeah. that's, that's what it is. And there are some things that you do show up for intentionally because you're like, this is a great network and I want to be here to expand my business. But I mm-hmm. think at the core, when it comes to actual community, that's going to get you through, it has mm-hmm. to be more than business. So you can have both. You don't have to, you know, just yeah. be one caller. I think not being in a community consistently, and I admittedly was not giving to community either because I was just felt like I was overwhelmed and drowning, getting my legs under me. And I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs feel that way. That's probably one of the big mistakes. I don't even want to call it mistakes or regrets. If I could go back and say, hey, Rachel, do this, that'd be one thing that I would encourage. Uh, what is something that you and your entrepreneurship path that you would maybe change, alter a little bit. I don't want to call them regrets because we don't know where we would have ended up yeah. by, you know, changing it completely. But what is something that you can pinpoint in your path from beginning to all the way now with what you're doing that you would just make a little tweak or adjustment to? Yeah, mine has been a lot of my um, big revelations have been around um, money and money mindset um, and worthiness. Mm-hmm. Um, of, uh, like, obviously when I first started out, I had no idea what I was doing. I was charging $99 a month for, um, uh, for, <laughs> for social media, ma- like full social media management, right? Like it was, it was really, really crazy. Um, and it's just because I didn't know that I could charge more. I actually didn't believe in my expertise. I had people mm-hmm. around me when I, t- when I told them I st- was starting a business. Um, I'll never forget someone who was very, very close to me. Um, probably, I won't say, but probably the closest person that's supposed to be um, to you and your closest support said to me, what do you think? You're like an expert now. And I was like, Been there. no, I don't think so. But I think that I could be. Um, and and so um, every time every time that I worked and got people results and people were happy with what I was doing, I got a little bit more. Um, courageous, a little bit more like confident in what I was doing. So I, I think my biggest um, regret is not believing in myself uh, early enough. Um, mm-hmm. To some extent, it was there because I would have I started a business, so I believed in something. Mm-hmm. But I'm also a person that like try something if it doesn't work, okay, let's try something again, right? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But that that idea, and I know it's a little bit of a, a little ideological, um, but Going from a person who charged ninety nine dollars a month to a person who now commands easily five grand to work with me for a project is a huge jump. Mm-hmm. Um, and even now, like like I probably could charge more. You know what I mean? Like those yes, kind of things. Well so, worth it. Yes. Yeah. So getting like, <laughs> that confidence factor and and, yeah. and really believing in the work that you do um, is something that I wish I'd grasped faster because it took me probably took me years until the pandemic to realize like, Oh, I'm really undercharging here. And my thing with that is like, there's, you know, how do you learn it? I, you know, I feel like this is one of those lessons that you take bits and pieces, hopefully the good, maybe not like that one-off comment. I have a tendency to do that as well. I latch onto one thing that one person that I don't even remember their name, at least I can be a one stranger in my life that has done that online. And I latched on and uh, to this day still bothers me. That's my own issues, not theirs. But how do you, how do we learn this uh, worth and value? Because one of the questions in my peer-to-peer group I was uh, proposed with was, 
uh, so I'm 38. So I have like seven years till I'm 45. And they asked, what do you want your net worth to be 45? And I was like, well, I don't know. And they're like, well, you're not dreaming big enough. And I'm like, I don't have any concept of what I could do. You know, I feel like in the beginning, it was almost easier to say, I just want to keep the electric bill on and pay, you know, electric on and pay for groceries. And then it moved to, okay, I want to pay off my debt. Well, now that I've achieved the financial goals for the most part, I don't know what I want to do. And I don't even know where to learn that kind of direction of what our worth is and also what we want to reach for. I don't know if you've gone through the same thing. Um, to an extent, but, uh, going back to like having community, one of the, um, one of the, the things like, yeah, like I hit a lot of the financial goals that I've had. Um, and then I was talking to one of the friends in the group chat and we were talking about what, what goals we had. And she shared with me that one of her goals is not necessarily to make a certain amount of money, but to be able to give a certain amount of money. She said, I want to be a six figure giver. And in order to be a six-figure giver, you have to be a high, high earner, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought that that was really great in that it helped me think about the impact that I want to make more than the goal, like this, this uh, milestone or financial goal. Um, so I tend to look at things from an impact standpoint. What is the impact that you want to make um, that may be helpful but again, learning that whole worthiness and, and gaining that confidence, a lot of that has come from getting feedback, uh, whether it's with clients that I work with or with the community that I've built. That, like if I'm having a down day, they have no problem pouring into me and reminding me. Um, mm-hmm. Even last night, I was call, I was playing with my, my friends, but I, I called myself a clown. I was like, no, I know I'm being a clown. They're like, no, you're <laughs> gorgeous and you deserve this and you like all these things and I'm like heck yeah yeah I do like sometimes you just need people around you that um because we're all going to have moments that we're down sometimes you just need people around you that you can trust is going to lift you right back up and remind you about some things that you've forgotten um and I I think that's what I have learned also as I've hit these goals as I've had these markers it's made me recognize like every time I have a win it's like oh you can trust yourself Kia Mm -hmm. like you can trust yourself to make it work the the reason why I can I mentioned that I can like try out something if it doesn't work I just try it out again the reason why I can do that is because I have proved to myself that I will always figure it out Mm -hmm. period like I will always so I trust myself to figure things out Um, and that's a confidence booster too like if I need to come up with $10,000 $10,000 for tuition, which I've had to do, like, yeah. I figure out how to come up with $10,000 for, for my daughter's tuition. You know what I mean? And so that helps build your confidence as well. Mm-hmm. So just doing the work um, and and looking at the impact and results you've made will, will build that confidence in your own self. So let's assume that we, undoubtedly, we're going to have someone watching this or listen to this that is just in the beginning or they're having to restart or completely pivot from scratch, you know, what if they don't have community, they don't have anyone and they, you know, they don't have clients so they can even write, they're just trying to get clients or just trying to get a customer. So it's not like they can send out an email and get a raving testimonial to build them up. They feel like they don't have a network or community. What would your feedback be to either help them find a community or what to do in those moments or both? Yeah. So it's about, this is where, you know, people throw around the word authentic, but this is where authenticity can, can help you. So um, there's lots of, like I said, there's lots of different ways to approach community. It could be from a friendship standpoint. It could be from like, I'm going to, I'm going to join this group that's local in person, or it could just be like, I'm going to join this um, Facebook group online, whatever that thing is. Um, usually there's always someone in that space that you admire for whatever reason or that you see doing, that you're curious about, that you want to know. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes it's just a matter of saying that, like, hey, I've seen your work or, hey, I've come across this and just want to say, like, I really appreciate, like, what you're putting out into the world. And, um, yeah, sometimes we have to get outside of our own, not have to, we must get outside of our own comfort zone in order to to hit the goals, whatever, if they're goals or, or just, you know, building a community. 
So if you really, truly want community, you cannot sit and wait for it to come to you because it's probably not. Um, you have to be intentional, just like anything else, about going and finding it. And then take a moment of, to be authentic and vulnerable and say to someone that you see that you're because when I have people have come to me have been like, hey, like, can I ask you a question about something? Absolutely. Because if no one had answered my questions in the beginning, I wouldn't be where I am. Like that mentor that planted that seed for my business, I still talk to her to this day and always attribute my success to her planting that seed for me. And and those of us who are in the position who understand that we didn't get here by ourselves always have a goal of wanting to give back yeah. um, and have that same kind of impact. So it's just an opportunity for you to be authentic and vulnerable and reach out. I'm sweating because I feel convicted because I am very much, I'm not a big flatterer person. And when my team watches this, they're going to be like, oh, understatement of the year, right? I'm not very complimentary. I may think it, it just never mm -hmm. makes it out of my mouth. Like, mm -hmm. and so I don't know, I'm working on it. I don't uh, think it's true. I don't think that's true at all, Rachel. I have, we, have team. Had, <laughs> we have had conversations where you have been complimentary. So it may not be something that you do all of the time. And I'm not saying that I'm a person that does that all the time either, but I know if there's someone that I want to mentor me mm -hmm. or someone that like, those okay. are the moments that I'm like, okay, like I have to, I mm -hmm. actually have to say the thing. So I'm not saying go out and give everybody compliments and you just got to become the okay. person. I'm just, I'm just saying like, when you see that yeah. moment, when you see that person um, that you want to have some type of relationship with, mm -hmm. just, you know, do the thing and see where it leads you. That's good. And on the other side of it, you've been talking about service. And that's one of the other big key takeaways I've taken from my peer group is just the idea of service. Like we just recently went on a retreat and almost every single activity we did had some sort of philanthropic or service based connection. And mm -hmm. it, the organization didn't require it. It's just the characteristic of the self-made successful people that they want to do that. Mm -hmm. And I just, that hit me extremely hard because I always talk about, you know, service of self, your community and your family, whatever the family structure looks like. And I think it, we get so ingrained in business that sometimes we don't even think about, you know, at least for me, you know, I mentioned a couple of times in the beginning, it was very much, I needed to make the money. We needed to survive. And I've always had the idea of wanting to help other people also run a business, but I didn't even know if I was going to be able to do it at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, anyways, I don't really know if I had a point with that other than I, I'm glad you brought up the service aspect and serving others and the impact is what you said. Um, because I know that I, and I've said it repeatedly, is even if I just impact one person, we don't know what the ripple effect of that's going to mm -hmm. be. Um, it doesn't really necessarily help on the hard days, but it makes decision making and putting myself out there a little easier. Instead of trying to think, oh, I want to impact 100,000 people this year, I'm just going for one. And I, I want to add really quick to this, Rachel, that service doesn't always have to be free. So, oh, free. <laughs> and yeah. free isn't always tied to money, too. So when you are reaching out to someone, if you have an expectation that that person now has to take you under their wings and you do nothing, then you are wrong. So if you're reaching out, especially when it's to be a mentor, the question should be, how can I how can I learn from you in a way that's also going to help you? Right. Yeah. Um, and so I'm not saying that we have to be out here just giving money all willy in, in our time because our time is very valuable. Mm -hmm. you, have, you have five kids. I have three like and I'm mm -hmm. now a single mom. I'm divorced now. So like, listen, I can't just be running out here doing. But imp the impact is what matters, not necessarily saying that you have to always be giving, you know, free time and free um, and free advice and all of these things. Mm -hmm. But you can you can impact people in several different ways. So if you have the expectation that whatever you get back from your community is going to be free um, and you don't have to do anything but show up, that is not what I'm talking about at all. Let me just clarify. No, no, I'm glad you did because I think, you know, especially if you're newer in business, you feel like you have to pay your dues, right? Mm -hmm. Or if later on when someone comes to you and says, will you mentor me? It's almost like you kind of, you said it in a way, but I'm going to expand on it. You said, 
if you had ever asked the question or, you know, you no one had ever answered your question in the beginning. I'm glad you're clarifying, though. It doesn't have to be for pay. And that's, I mean, for free, it, you know, it could be for pay. And that's actually how I got into before this whole online course space exploded was I was repeatedly sharing with other people how to set up their business for free, moved it into blogging. And then they were asking all these questions. And finally, I was like, I have to safeguard my time here. And I can still serve them with this information because it's all neatly packed in one, but I couldn't give a freely anymore. And that's really where all my like legal and business courses came out of was a burnout. Plus I want to serve, but I've also got to eat. Yes. I mean, and that still is a service. If they're getting to learn how to set up a business for mm-hmm. a fraction of what it, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like courses. Fraction what an attorney would cost. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is still service. I mean, the, yeah. some of the early mentors that I had, I paid to be in courses. I paid to be in their programs and still give them their dues. Like, um, they, yes, they did mentor me through their course. Like, I wouldn't know what I knew um, without them. So there's mm-hmm. that. So what's big? What big is coming for you? I mean, you're always doing amazing things. Yeah. Do you have anything um, that you can share or just something you're just excited for in general? Yeah. So I've been having a lot of conversations um, around um, deepening uh, ideal clients, dream, like going yeah, from yeah, dream yeah. clients. So we've been talking a lot about um, messaging and from the pandemic still, a lot of people are burnt out. Right. Yeah, and yeah. we all got to this point. Of, well, a lot of people got to this point, especially during the pandemic, that they were hopping on all these trends and it has burned them out. Like um, the reels and like all these things is like, ah, I can't do do this anymore. Um, and I have, even before the pandemic, like part of my brand has been about classic timeless marketing strategies. What are those things that are never going to go out of style? And probably one of the reasons why I got there is because I am a very, like even my fashion is very classic, right? So I'm not a person that like has a, like, a lot of flashy, but the things that I do have and that I invest in will never go out of style. Right. Um, And so I can wear them in, in the early two thousands. I could still wear (laughs) wear those things today if I wanted to. And those are the kind of things that stick with you. Like trends come and go um, and you may get burnt out on them, but what's classic and timeless stays. So I've been having a lot of conversations around classic and timeless marketing strategies themselves. um, And then, uh, sustainable um, marketing systems. So, you know, everyone is feeling burnt out. And they're like, you know what? I just don't have time for for all of these things. Mm-hmm. And so one of the things that I'm really leaning into is, well, how come you aren't creating a, a system and, and marketing strategies that actually align with what you have capacity for? Um, and that's really the work that I do. We really focus on mm-hmm. what is the message that your ideal or dream clients need to hear in order to self-select into your community, what platforms do you have to, what platforms are your ideal clients on? Are you just on these platforms because you think you have to be on them? Mm -hmm. Do you even have to be on social? Is there a better way? Are your clients somewhere else looking for information? Um, And then uh, making, so saying the right thing with your messaging, um, really understanding your ideal client and how they think. Like this idea for a while there, you ask someone their ideal client, they're like, oh, she's 30 to 45 and she shops at Target. Who do you know that does not do that? That is not your ideal client. Yeah, right. Friend, I need you to understand that. <laughs> and, and so we've been going yeah. through a lot of um, activities to get people to understand actually who that ideal client is, how they think, and then what messages they need to hear. Um, so I call I call kind of all of this the power four um, marketing system. And I'm, I'm, I'm really starting um, to lean into that. I've been doing a lot of strategy sessions with people, helping them figure out their power for saying the right thing to the right people on the right platform in the right way for you. Yeah. Um, and that is what I'm really, really excited about because it goes back to that very classic foundational um, marketing strategies and systems that actually feel good to you so that I mean, mm-hmm. for a while there, people started to hate their marketing um, because it was so outside of mm-hmm. their, what they were aligned to. And I'm not saying you don't have to get out of your comfort zone because there are some things that you're going to have to do, mm-hmm. but you do not have to hop on every single trend to be successful. And you may not even have to be on social media. Social media is actually 
people get um, gasp when I say this, especially since I started out as a social media manager. <laughs> social media is actually the last place that you should be marketing. Mm. It is where you go to repurpose. Um, oh, yes. It is not yeah. where you go to. It is. It does. It shouldn't be your end all, be all for your for your social, especially in where we are right now. People are moving away from that. Um, so you have to stay in front of that. The fact that mm-hmm. that's not necessarily where um, where people are going. So if you're struggling right now, that's one thing to think about. Like, how am I reaching people right now? Am I saying the right thing? Am I talking to mm-hmm. the right person? Am I on the right platforms? And how can I do this in a way that actually works for my business? I, I you'll probably see this too. I see this with my business consulting clients. We go. I'm very much like even in my um, co- uh, group coaching, Real Business Accelerator. We have a section called Real Simple, and <laughs> it's getting down into very simplistic. What is the bare minimum almost, which kind of has a negative connotation, but like if I only had to choose one platform of where my person is, which would that platform be? For like mm-hmm. social, or if I had to pick one content delivery system, what would it be? And but what I'm finding, and I think you may agree with this as well, many of those that hopped in, especially during pandemic, and if you guys are here and feeling burnout, re-listen to this episode. Like there's so <laughs> much that Kia just threw out for you. It's a whole, it's a whole outline that you could go through. I would be willing to lay money that you jumped on to creating reels or whatever it is, and I do them too. But you didn't even do this simplistic, like four question answer that Kia just provided. And so you're essentially throwing noise into the void. Go to the mall or to a concert, start yelling. Maybe a couple of people around you will hear you, but nobody, you know, there's so much noise and stuff going on. Your clear messaging and who you're talking to and all that is just being swallowed up. Absolutely. I can't. One of my um, dream clients um, came to me. We were designing her strategy. And I asked her, okay, so what platforms are you on? She's like, well, I'm on Instagram and all these things. And she's B2B. Mm. That is, and I'm like, okay, so why are, you, why are you on Instagram? And she's like, well, I feel like that's where I should be. Like, that's where everyone is. And I was like, okay, do you like Instagram? She's like, no, I hate it. I was like, okay, let's, let's, try, let's try LinkedIn. Let's try LinkedIn. I gave her, she, she says this, I'm not, I gave her permission to drop Instagram and right. focus on LinkedIn and her business exploded because that's where her customers actually were. They didn't get, they didn't care about Instagram. They weren't even there. So she was doing all of this work and was under all this pressure uh-huh. um, and she didn't even need to be. The place where her business has exploded has been LinkedIn. Um, and she always credit, credits me for that. Um, and she doesn't even have to post every day. I'm like, you can post two to three times a week. She's like, what? <laughs> and know. it changed her business. Two things on that. Send me an invoice when we're done from this, because this was a full on like conviction coaching session for me. Um, So do that. And then two, the thing that you said about permission is it hits hard for me because even though I'm so incredibly driven, those that don't know me, if you're newer to this, um, I do Ironman triathlons, like I'm very self-motivated to get stuff done. And people always ask, well, why do you have a coach? I have a coach. She lives in California. So we do virtual coaching for my training. And the reason I have a coach is really with what you just said. When I start to get tired or burn out and I just have a plan, I'll just power through no matter how I feel. I will get injured. I will not be happy. It will affect everything else. But it's I'm almost paying her to give me permission. Not that I need the permission, but it's like this shift within me when she's like, okay, just take it easy today. (laughs) Because I don't have the self-awareness, admittedly, to always do that. Oftentimes it's fear-driven, et cetera. But I also see it in business. And you hit it on the head that having, well, you didn't say this. I'm going to. I'm going to expand it. But I think having a coach or someone to guide you Mm -hmm. who has the receipts to show, first of all, knows what they're doing, but can lend that sort of support and permission Mm -hmm. is so freeing. Yeah. Yeah, Um, absolutely. I feel like everybody needs a coach, a coach or consultant. And it goes back to like you saying you just power through. We get so close to our businesses. We are so even me. I'm a marketer. Guess what? I don't do my own marketing or I have a consultant that I work with because I am so close to my business that sometimes I can't see like what is actually happening. Like 
I can't give myself the same advice that I would give my own clients, sure right? Is. <laughs> uh, right. And so you do need a third party, even with the, the work that you do. I have so many clients that are like, I can't believe that I have a hard time with this. I have clients that are marketers um, that do, we do the same work. Yep. But we go in and help each other because we get so close to it. We just know this is what you're supposed to do. This is the plan. I'm going to do it. And it's not working. It's not yep. working because you are too close to the thing. Yeah. I laugh because I will. I do audio messages with my team and with my right hand. I'll say, if I was my client, I would tell her to do this. But I'm not going to listen. Right. To yes. yes. <laughs> That's exactly how that goes. That's so true. I love that. You know, and I think that that's a really, so just to kind of recap what we talked about, you know, we want to know our why and our impact and all of that. But I think the only way you're really going to be able to do all of that is making sure that you know your worth, getting into a community that's going to help you see that and lift you up, but also not overcomplicating. I think that's in business. And especially when you start a new project or a new business in general, it's overwhelming. There's all these things and the internet doesn't help with the onslaught of ads and even podcasts and all of that, telling you all the things you need to do. It, you really have to get back to, like you said, power for the basics on something and kind of look at what do I minimally need to do here? Then you can build on it. But if you don't even have that under control, you're going to be a hot mess. Yes. And what's minimum doing what, feels like the minimum often gets you maximum results because you're able, yep. you're able to simplify things and do exact because you're more focused on saying the right things to the right people instead of just it's, it's quality over quantity, right? And quality will always outperform quantity. Um, and so, especially with, if you're a service provider. Um, and so when you really get down to what we call the minimum, but really it's just quality marketing. Yeah. You will I need see. a better word than minimum. Minimum sounds so, but at the same time, it's almost yeah. free in a way. It's like, I just need to pick one post today. Hold yes. it so much better than 14 reels or whatever. Yes. I mean, it is minimum. It is. And it's also what works. It's yeah. also what works. So. Well, Kia, I absolutely love this. It's funny because I always say in any education, whether you are brand new in business or you've been doing it for decades, which I have at this time. Um, you can always get something out of any sort of education you go to, whether it's what to do or what not to do. I'm obviously going to be taking the LinkedIn tip. Um, getting, I hate Instagram. So if I can get off of it, you just gave me permission. Like I said, send me an invoice. But I, I think there are so many nuggets through this that if anyone needs help, I tell you, you know, I have a lot of guests that come on my podcast and don't tell them when I say this, but there are very few people. I mean, I love their product quality and their character, but there are very few people that if you came to me and were like, I am really struggling with X, that I'd be like, you absolutely have to go to this person. Q would be absolutely my person for a lot of what we talked about, marketing and community. Thank you so much. Yes. That means a lot to me. See, and you said you weren't complimentary. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but that's also because we know each other and we've worked together and we've, you know, we've hung out together in person. You know, yeah. it's not just someone I mean, I admire you, but it's not like someone that I've looked at from afar that I've never interacted with. Yeah. But where can people interact with you? Yeah. So um, my website is KiaYoung.com and I'm on the socials at It's Kia Young. Um, I don't play much on Instagram. You can find me in my stories every now and then. Um, but I'm mostly on LinkedIn at this point. So I'm going to have to get over there. My team's yeah. going to be like, oh, changing stuff on us. And yeah, yes, that's the beauty. LinkedIn has changed quite a bit. So you might go over there and like it. It's not mm -hmm. the LinkedIn from 2017. <laughs> I love that. I enjoy it. Well, awesome. Everyone, thank you so much for joining us this week with Real Biz Talk. Don't forget that we have the Facebook community that you can jump into. It's free. Ask questions. Doesn't matter the industry you're in or level of entrepreneurship. We would love to have you. The goal is really to ask the questions that you may not get answered anywhere else and just to provide you the support that you need. So I'll see you guys there. And on the next episode, keep it real. Thank mm -hmm. you.